How is the piano? Do you like it? Yeah. It's very surprising to see a Fazioli uh, in Prague. I, I, don't, I didn't expect it, I don't know. Uh, I, f I haven't played Fazioli in a long time, to say. And I find Fazioli sometimes difficult to play because it's so overpowering. It's too big, like it becomes very big, especially for Bach. I think one has to be very careful. Um, it sounds very loud in the room, but it could be also just the live acoustics. Um, thank you for this. You just opened my ears. Um, I was in an airplane for 14 hours, and um, this Bach really was doing well now for me, so thank you for that. Um, I want to talk to you about essentially one thing. It's phrasing. Um, you know, the piano, and especially this piano, if we don't control it, it's going to go really fast out of control. It's going to go uh, it's going to go more than we want to. Um, you play with pedal and that's okay. Um, but the pedal, of course, adds another layer of power. Um, do you play harpsichord? Did you ever try? Never touch the harpsichord. You should. Um, not, not that um, it's going to change your way of playing the piano, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you that a few things are just physically not possible on a harpsichord, which we, th we take for granted, such as uh, crescendo into the phrase, or subito uh, forte or subito piano, things that we, we do all the time at the piano, but which Bach certainly never would have done because they were not physically possible. Um, I mean, the clavichord had some, some possibilities of, of doing something once the sound was hit, but there's no such thing as a crescendo into the phrase. So I, I found, uh, I, I play very badly harpsichord. I took two years of harpsichord, but it taught me so many things just about Baroque music in general. Uh, and it taught me also to kind of contain my style of playing Baroque music at the piano. Um, so for one thing, and this is straight from what I learned at the harpsichord, I found that phrasings always start and go down. They can never start and go somewhere. This is fundamentally different from what we think of in classical music or romantic music. I am no specialist of romantic music, um, but I play classical music, um, Mozart, um, Haydn, etc. So there we have a gesture that can go somewhere. But I find with Bach and his contemporaries, usually the gesture starts somewhere and then kind of disappears. So think about this for 10 seconds and just play as the beginning again. 10 seconds. better already because your tendency before was to go towards the second bar you'd play the beginning and the kind of resolution would come on the second bar but the second bar is just another beginning it's the beginning of the left hand of the middle voice right so and, and that came out really beautifully I, I like that also in the previous version but I think the gesture is can you just play the just the well, the, the, the most important thing is not, not to make a crescendo from, um, because then we, we kind of lose the gesture. We have, we have lost this feeling. So just, just the right hand, please. Much better. And it's actually much easier too. But the, the problem is we don't think about it because we think, well, you know, this outline of the melody, we can kind of go here and there, and then we show the entrance of the left hand. We don't have to show it. It's very clear, especially the way you play it. So um, I'm going to ask you to play the beginning again. And actually, you did it very well 
uh, until bar seven, right? You can also play with the score, I don't care. <clears throat> right, so really the phrase up until bar seven, and I, I want almost no action except to show us the entrances. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wanna, if you wanna do something here, differentiate a little bit the the voices. That's fine, but absolutely no crescendo into the phrase. Just try once. basically to simplify, right? I think, I think in the first version you just did too much, and, and, and it's okay, but I think the music doesn't need it. I think um, it, can, it can be almost nothing, you know? And uh, this is another artifact about, uh, about this instrument, and especially about the fazioli. When we have faster notes, like the triplets, it becomes busy and becomes loud, right? So it's, it's actually much easier to play the first bar than it is to play the second bar. If we want to stay calm and just very simple in the melody, in the second bar it becomes very busy already. So um, if you're going to do anything, then maybe you can take out, but not, you know, you can, you can show us the beginning of this, of, of this opening. Actually, I, I was kind of, I told myself I'm not going to touch the piano. I already touched it twice, so I keep I keep touching it. I want to hear every little entrance and and never the other way around. So never. For me, this is a, this is a not a baroque gesture. This is this is um, maybe hundred years later or something. Uh, can you take again from here? Try to separate really so just show us this this entrance. So you realize the the risk is that it sounds like an accent, right? If we don't follow the the held note, it could sound like Something like that's not good either, but I think it's just to kind of keep the tension and then show exactly. So this is um, a very tedious exercise, but I think you can go through this uh, prelude on your own and, and and decide where are these long phrases. But I think basically for the um, for the seven first measures, not much going on. Um, we don't have to add intention or gesture because it's all in it's it's all in here. And every time we have this little figure, mm -hmm. you show us. I think that's a that's an exercise you're going to do on your own. We don't have time for today, but I think it's a good it's a good uh, and it'll make you think about. Um, uh, about just a general Baroque gesture to start somewhere. And I find in, Bach, in Bach's music, usually it starts somewhere and it gets lost. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, that's very different in, um, in Mozart or in Haydn, and we're gonna maybe find, that, find out about this later. Um, 
I like your playing very much. It's just I want to give you another perspective and see how maybe it can change your uh, can change your perspective on, on how you want to play this brilliant. Um, and you obviously studied this a lot, and you know the, the you know the piece very well. How long have you played this? Uh, sorry. How long have you played this? Uh, one month. That's impressive. <laughs> no, yeah, but it's it's, it's um, you know you know you know the piece. Um, so in the fugue, it's about it's about the same thing. Um, really, the only thing that that bothered me and that bothered me pretty much every time is is you you actually accentuate the arrival point. And it's the same idea as before. For me, it's... And never... Because we, we, we lose the 4-4 we lose the four four and we lose the gesture. So if you do... I don't know where, where is my, where's my groove, I don't know where is my time. And I forget that it's... Lighter, not, not so heavy and, and uh, not so German, maybe, though Bach was very German. <laughs> In fact, uh, he, never, he never even left Germany. But um, yeah, but you see, this is, this is kind of, this is kind of, I think, get you closer to, uh, to a kind of Baroque feeling. And uh, I don't think that we should Im imitate the harpsichord in any, in any respect. Uh, as, uh, as pianists, but it should give us an idea of what was possible at the time, and, and then we decide if we want to do it or not. But it's a good exercise anyways, especially if, it's, if you've never thought about it, you know? So um, let's, let's just do a little more, we have a little more time, and um, we really want to hear every time, so the same thing of course is, uh, so, and not but also, not never. I don't want that. I want. I, I want this. It's almost like jazz, you know. It's almost off beat. Try that. It's in the air because how are we supposed to know where, where this piece starts? How are we gonna, how are we gonna, how are we gonna know this? We, we don't, right? I mean, it, it could just be, or it could be one, two, three, one, two, three, one. We, we don't know. 
So you have to help us with this, right? So we have, I mean, this is actually, you know, Bach is playing with us here because to start the piece with, with um, a silence is, is actually very weird, right? I mean, we, we don't know the theme of the, of the, uh, the subject of the fugue. We, we're going to find out. But we, if, we don't, if you don't give us a sense of...
you think it's easier? I think, I mean, or, or, but you have to go, but you have, well, it's, it sounds easier. It sounds lighter, so, um, like, every time we have this figure, you, you did it so well, um, actually, here. And I find it much more bouncy and much, much lighter. Um, one more thing I'm going to tell you. Here you had this tendency to do... It could also be... something kind of in between. But I, I don't think it should be... Because then we lose the, we, we lose the, the next entrance, right? Because we do... Uh, it's, it's gone, but if we... Just show the polyphony to the max. Sakamoto. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's not a classical pianist by any means. Um, he's a film composer and um, he used to be a Japanese disco pop artist in the 70s. But he played Bach on this show and he was very nervous because he has no business. He says he has no business playing Bach. So he was using the score and it was the most amazing performance because it was the performance of a non-pianist or a non-classical pianist playing a Bach that was totally minimal. Uh, I think he played pianissimo for about 30 minutes. Um, and he also had other sounds going, like there was some kind of effects um, in the background, there was a video. Uh, so it was a kind of futurist performance. But uh, I learned so much from this because uh, A, Bach is kind of a universal language that even you know, a pop musician can relate to and can play. And also, depending on uh, which, which pieces you choose, and this one is a difficult one. I mean, <clears throat> this is clearly one of the most uh, intricate. Um, I'm not so familiar with book two, I'm more familiar with book, uh, book one, but um, it's something that you can really make your own version, you know? And what, what this guy did last year, I had never heard. I never even thought it was possible to do something like this. You know? um, so whatever I'm telling you, it's just my opinion. But I think that um, if you think of those two things, the first thing is the, um, the gesture coming, starting always from the top and no destination. Like Baroque, just a, a, a rule, just a general rule. The gesture starts and we lose the voice because the next voice is already coming in and we, we're not interested in where it's, it's going. It will be lost in counterpoint or lost in translation or something. Uh, that's for the prelude. And in, this, in, in the fugue, I think just uh, go over it again and reverse the accents. So, in, in especially after the long, the held notes, um, that we don't get kind of the resolution ac accentuated, right? So, and perhaps a little faster. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
but um, it reminds me in so many ways on the, the other C major, the 48. You know which one I mean? And it's like almost the exact, exact opposite. Uh, there was the same key and um, some similar things. Actually very, very opposite. Um, do you like this piece? Exactly. So let's make it funny. Let's make it much more funny. I think you, you have um, already hinted at some jokes, but I think it can be much more funny. It can be uh, really kind of like a parody almost, you know? Because he's playing with so many little um, details. He's getting our attention to one place and then he's like, nope, sorry, it was a joke. And then he brings us to another place, and then it's like, no, and another joke. Um, and and some, of, some of the things I like very much what you did. I have a few ideas um, to get a little list here of um, 
some details. My mentor used to do this. I have these lists, like books and books of lists of measure numbers, and now I find myself doing the same thing. It's kind of scary. Um, if you look at the first page, how many <coughs> dynamic markings do you see? How many nuance? But actually, it's only piano or forte, right? I mean, there's a little crescendo here and a little crescendo here, and that's about it. So I, I found that that could be already funnier, like really exaggerate. I mean, this forte sh should kind of throw, throw us out of our seats, you know? It starts, it goes on like this, there's fermata, and then bah! And this, this has to come like, it really has to rip us out of the seat. Try, try again and, and just surprise us after this film. Okay. You, I think it's too beautiful, your forte. I think you, you make too much of a... Uh, I think it can be. And it really has to be completely surprising and different and funny and strange. Try again. Satisfying. One thing that might help you, because now we realize what, what you actually do, you prepare the hands. You do, and you go into position. Try not to do that. Try to finish, and just very last minute, try that. still afraid to really play forte here and, and kind of not beautiful. Like, you have a very beautiful sound, and if you're going to give us three chords that are not precisely beautiful, but are more like ah, 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 you still play beautifully. So don't be, don't be scared. I, I want kind of this sound, you know? Which is very different from... Sorry for the wrong note. One more time. That was much better. I had a wrong note, but it was still better. So I think it's just we have to allow ourselves to go beyond, because Haydn actually goes beyond. I think he's uh, of the classics, of the classical composers. He's the one who is really sometimes far out, like out, outlandish, kind of. Um, and this is just C major, and it's a, a, a forte, not even subito, it's just a forte. And it's funny and it's strange, so let's, let's really make it that way. I was going to tell you one more thing about the first bar. And now you stop doing it, but uh, the, maybe the two first versions, your tempo was not ent uh, entirely clear until maybe the second or the third bar. I think you could, you could just practice, like, just imagine, you know, the left hand would, would already play here. Try, try once, with, not with the extra left hand, but just with a very steady beat. favorite version so far. 
But I think you can still play around and see how far you want to go. Uh, and don't be afraid, because I think with Haydn we can, we can really kind of go, go out. Um, but it's, I find this much better, let's see. So, um, let's, let me go to my list here. Yeah, so um, some of the things I said uh, for the Bach before actually are still, um, I find in, in, uh, in Haydn's, it's kind of like an overlap between the old music, the old Baroque, and the new style, the new classical style. Um, I'm talking about the phrasing. But for example, when we have something like this bar, Uh, this didn't sound much different than, let's say... But actually, it's very different. This can be very funny. Let, let, just do something freaky here, I don't know. Um, maybe if you want to start here, you can try something. Take your time, because if, if you're going to play right in time, we, we don't notice the, the difference of articulation. What I want to hear is that these three are tied and then we're off beat, you know, because we're always in four, and we're going to play slower. Do, do something. This is a very, very operatic moment here, I think. Uh, same place. better and excuse me one more thing don't accentuate the, the lower note because then we, we lose it don't do that it, it, we lose the fun when it's like if it's the same it's just going on like before but if you do it's, it's, it's weird like we lose the we lose the ground try one more time That was, that was better. That was more, for me, it was funnier. Uh, and I think you can also take more time maybe, but that's up to you if you want to do like a... Just like a kind of cadenza free moment. You're gonna, you're gonna uh, experiment with that. Uh, what do I have? 47, 48. Yeah, so um, can you play, for example, Basically, twice a repeated phrase, right? It's twice the same thing repeated. Um, can we make that a little funnier and not just a repeat of what we already heard? So, for example, I think especially in the ornamentation, so the first time you do, I don't know, or, but, sorry. And then the second time you can just do something else, I don't know. Just something, something funny. Let's try. So if you do the first time before the beat, why don't you try to do like the second time on the beat, like just something else. and then you can go back home and you can think about it and, and play around because this is not written music, right? This is just an ornamentation, so we have some freedom here. We can really 
we can really be an inventive and kind of fantasy-like. Uh, I think the, the, the difference between piano and forte here has to be much bigger also. Uh, sorry. Especially the second, the second forte has to be too forte almost. It has to be uh, uh, not vulgar, but like, you know, kind of ridiculous because it's, it's just repeating twice the same thing. Um, I'm going to speed up a little bit here. Uh, 89. No, 66. Oh, yeah. So, this is a great moment. Um, and I want you to make it totally great again. <laughs> Bad joke. So, I, that's very unexpected, this moment, right? It's like the first time it's, go and it's going totally weird in terms of tonality. Um, so, one of my favorite pianists, Swedish Bunda, uh, he said, you know, play every sound as if it was a matter of life or death. So that might be a little intense as a general thing to say, but I think this, this moment here is kind of like that. You have to make some magic happen here, because if this moment goes unnoticed, it would be too bad. So let's, um, maybe you can play from, I don't know, somewhere here. Yeah, that's fine. Exaggerated. And then. 
back to this, something like that. Okay, you're still doing ta ta ta, but I want ta ta ta. It's, it's kind of, it takes a leap of faith to, to do these things because we think we have to kind of finish off the phrases beautifully. And, but the point is, you already finish off so many phrases beautifully and in Haydn I think some phrases are just not to be ended beautifully, you know? And especially in this kind of mu music where it's, it's kind of like in your face. Pa, pa, pa! It's fortissimo, no rallentando nothing, no, not even a fermata. Actually this is going straight. Ba -da 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 Pa, pa, pa. So, this could be a, a moment of confusion, let's say. Um, I'm almost done with the first movement, 140. Yeah, here is again this uh, thing we did on, uh, before with the articulation. Uh, yeah, 140. So, th this I find extremely funny, not to say stupid. Um, I mean, count how many times we have it. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six times. It's like um, young people don't have uh, records anymore, vinyl, but it's like the needle is stuck, you know? It's like it doesn't go on. So um, don't give it any gesture. Don't make it like a crescendo to the resolution. Just, just play it like like it's the needle is stuck, like we're, we're kind of getting stupid in a way, you know? Um, why is it easy for you? Maybe, maybe, maybe there? <coughs> yeah, something like that. And, and it, can be, it can be really stubborn, you know, like, like, like what you don't, you, you know, you, you're not explaining it to us, you know? It, it's actually, it's not, it's not going there, it's just, it's stuck here, and then all of a sudden we're here, but it's not, it shouldn't, I don't think it should be... It should not be that, it should just be... And then we're, we're out of it. But it's another very funny moment, if you make it funny. So try, try again. Still a tendency to do crescendo. I wouldn't do crescendo. I would just keep it exactly the same for six beats, six beats in a row, which is ridiculous and uh, which is just supposed to be kind of fun. But it's, it's, you're gonna you're gonna think about that. Um, I like the second movement very much. I thought it was very beautiful. Um, just a few things. Let's see. Uh, yeah, this this here. It's a moment of almost like, I don't want to say Chopinesque, you know, but um, if some people heard me say Chopinesque, they would, uh, they would, they would quote me, you said, you said Chopinesque. So I'm going to say Chopinesque now. Just give us a moment of fantasy here, of, of something uh, beautiful and uh, kind of like uh, unexpected. I don't know, we have to hear it from a little before maybe. <laughs> Because, I mean, 
the voice leading it's a lot of things happening in this very short amount of time and, and like chromaticism um, and I don't know it's not an accent of course and I don't know what this means so you, you want to take time there right is that, is that what I mean <laughs> that's good but who wrote that Okay, so uh, for me, just take your time here. Try once, like really exaggerated, uh, and then don't do this one because I think this one is not is not high enough. Uh, but if you if you just play in, in time here and take your time for the highest note. So if he use an extra ink to write these two um, these two letters, just do it. I mean, do something. I think was, this was quite beautiful. Um, 18, 19. Yeah. So here I was thinking <clears throat> about what I said about the Bach before. You know, like the. Um, the phrase starting somewhere and, and as opposed to the phrase going somewhere. Uh, and here I'm not quite sure if, if this applies uh, or, or if the other applies, because I don't know if it's... or if it's... It could be maybe something in between, you know? more sense just the uh, agogic the, uh, the the phrasing this part is another Friedrich Gulda moment is life or death right there um, life probably better than death but um, this this note I has to come from I don't know this out, out, otherworldly uh, outlandish something really special and um, is I don't know how we can prepare for these moments, you know, I, um, because now I told you this and, and you're going to do it again and you're going to think about it, but uh, truth is, I can't, I can't explain where we get this um, uh, otherworldly tonality or sound. 
um, you know, if we were into um, acting, you know, Stanislavski would say, okay, well, think of something really, uh, really special, think of something completely unrelated, but you just transpose it, you know, think of, of a moment where you entered the house and, and the light was, I don't know, I'm just making up stuff, right? The, the light was off and, um, and this door opened and this amazing thing just came out of the door. I don't know, just something, but make it happen here. Because you only have you only have once. There's no repeat. This is the only time we need we need this moment to be. Oh my God! So uh, maybe from here. Yeah, this forte you don't do. I, 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 I don't know if you should, but I, I also don't know if this piano is Haydn's. Probably isn't. <coughs> this is um. This looks like Handel, right? Probably Handel. So it's, it's difficult to know, but let's try once because I think it could be really unexpected after all these flat and, and F minor and stuff. So from here and just try once again. Thank you for the pedal. 
Uh, that, that's something that's something to practice actually, because it, the trailers are easy if we do crescendo or decrescendo, but if we just stay like, it's not so easy. Uh, but in any case, I like this movement very much, and I have very little to say about the last one. <coughs> Let's go through the last one. So now we're back into the funny stuff, right? So we're back into into the joke. So what I said before about we have another moment like this here. Um, so. I think this has to be really intense. 
tempo and then like it's, it goes by so fast that it, it sounds like a mistake, like you, you, you mess up the key or something. It's supposed to be major, not minor, and definitely not Neapolitan six. So um, from here, um, from here.
This is very difficult, don't you think? I, I always thought this was, if not the most difficult uh, prelude in Fugue of Book One, at least one of the most difficult. And I'm really sorry about your finger, man. Um, to tell you the truth, you, you want to play Scriabin, right? Yeah. And that, that was uh, potentially an issue for me. Because I, I, I well, actually, I, I was um, I was hoping you would play Scriabin because I wanted to learn something about Scriabin. And I, I don't know much about Scriabin. I played a couple of pieces, maybe a couple of sonatas and one Prometheus years ago. Um, so, but actually, I had prepared for Scriabin. <laughs> I had, I had gotten the score, I had gotten, uh, got, gotten through it. Uh, but I'm going to say again what I said about uh, the knives, because uh, this gentleman cut himself cooking. And um, I'm a cook as well. And, um, you know, it's, the question really is, do you have a good knife or a bad knife? So I'm just going to tell this to the audience, could be the most important thing I say today. It's much easier to cut yourself with a cheap knife than it is with a, a good knife. So. Uh, the, whole, the whole thing about, you know, sharp knives are more uh, dangerous than, than bad knives, that's not true. Uh, a sharp knife is actually, you can control it much better than a cheap knife, okay. And also a very nice suit, I feel slightly underdressed. But um, let's uh, talk about Bach a little bit. Um, so, I like your mood, is, is definitely... Um, uh, you make a statement of this of this prelude. It's um, I don't know if it's uh, kind of like a meditation for you or kind of right. Um, and I can I can understand that. I can I can feel that. Um, what I'm losing a little bit is um, the six four. Um, you know th this. 6-4 for us doesn't mean much, I think. It could just mean like it's a slow 3, or it could mean um, it's a super slow 2. Um, it could also mean... Um, what, what else could it mean? It could be, it could be like a, a, a very slow 3, but like on, on, a, uh, on a waltz, a waltz thing, like... Something like this. But the uh, truth is, I think... For Bach's time, 6-4 is something very specific. And um, I'm not sure what it is, um, because uh, definitely there are some courants uh, in, in this kind of 3 2 6 4 ish um, meter. Um, but in any case, the eighth note would be faster, I think. Now, it's not, it's not important because, I mean, I get your point that you want to install this mood and you, you don't just you don't care about giving the, the eighth note um, a Siciliano, right, 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 right. That sounds like a good plan. But for the Siciliano to come through, it would have to have a little more motion. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat what I said uh, about the, the F-sharp minor, you know? If we're gonna start the phrases from the top, from the beginning, then actually this, the eighth note have to be faster because otherwise we just lose the attention, right? Because if we do... It doesn't really make much sense, but if we... So, maybe just as an exercise, Keep, keep the touch of the meditation, keep the F sharp minor sad meditative touch, but rhythmically just make us a little bit more dance, dance-like, a little bit more. Actually, feel some some noble movement of dance or something. Um, I I like what you do rhythmically with. This has some inner life. Uh, this little thing, right? It has it has something. You do something. I don't know what it is. Um, it's, 
a, a slight, maybe slight acceleration. But uh, what you do here, I'm not convinced. The, you, you actually do a, do a crescendo to... I, I really hear this. And I kind of want to hear, just for now, And, and then this could be even, just the way you do it could be even more special. Try, try that. Now, now you actually did, did the other way around. Yeah, that's better. So one last thing I'm going to tell you is I think this is better. Um, this gets busy. Uh, the, this was fine the first time, but the second time it got a little sticky, busy. Just keep it simple. Try. It's much better. sounds a more there's more motion b is more interesting in terms of touch and three there is no um, you know uh, the meditation is not disturbed by inner action like it's if you if we have a meditation but like every bar we have this thing going on then it's not really meditation but if we have this constant thing going is it really could be like a meditation and the rhythm is kind of like you said like Sicilian. So I think this, this is exactly what you, what you, um, I think this is what you want to do. Um, and, 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 this, and you can, and you will, because it's, it's just these little things, um, they amount to a lot. It's like every little detail, if you accumulate these three uh, things. So uh, first, this is, this is more important. Second, don't let this get into, into the way. And third, um, the rhythm, keep it, keep it flowing, right? So that's three elements which should get you through at least the first page. Um, play again. Keep, keep, keep playing. I'm going to stop at some point, but keep playing. Before, I'm okay with a little something uh, tempo-wise or articulation-wise, but really, we should our ear should, the attention should go up to, up to the G sharp minor because that's uh, that's because it's Bach, you know, and he's gonna make sure, you know, after eight bars or in this term, in this case, thirteen bars, um, we are in the dominant key. Uh, just one last detail about the first bar: make sure that. 
the second me, the second E, is not louder than the first one. Because if you do, then then it's it's, up, it's upside down. Try try one more time in the beginning. Sorry. For me, this makes all the difference, uh, and it actually sounds like Bach, you know. Um, the mistake is is to make the phrase uh, kind of the, the arrival point of the phrase more important than the starting point, and this is true um, touch wood for 95% of Baroque music. Um, and the problem is that piano not being a Baroque instrument, our tendency is always to accumulate the sound, you know. So even if we do if we don't do the accent in the second E, but we just uh, hold the notes, it sounds loud because there's more, there's more sound. There's more sound, but the heart, the heart can't do that. So um, that's something to think about each time, right? I mean, and you, ha you have this, I don't know, 120 times in this piece or something, so it's to go through and make sure really every um, Actually liked very much. Uh, oh yes, why 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 did you um? Can I have this part again? Also have my variation because I wrote some some errors here, but actually we we, we talked about it here. But I think it's it's much better to do. Um, just just give us this 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 chant. But I think when you make it, you, now you realize, and so that's that's good because before maybe you didn't realize. But this is, this is a kind of um, artifact uh, as a as a as a piano player, and, and you are a great pianist. Is is just something unconsciously, and if we, we we don't realize this because it's just the way we do it and the way everybody do, does it. But if you start doing it differently. It's gonna get something special, definitely, and the phrasing is gonna it's gonna it's gonna change. It's gonna change the way um, you convey the feeling of this piece. So uh, I really liked what you did um, towards the end of the of the piece, but then I realized here is something really interesting, rhythmically speaking, because we have like a large hemiola over two over two bars, um, and this didn't quite come through because 
the tempo was a bit too slow and also it got busy inside the bar. But really, if we could hear once... Like, I want to hear these four... Like, make, make... And, and, and of course, Paris, like, it's not so easy because the left hand is doing something completely different. So, um, but this is a special bar, or a special couple of bar. Maybe from here? Careful. Not. Don't accentuate the arrival. special again. It's like, this is your moment here. It's over. So, just just try again, and, and the last bar... Just, I mean, do some, right? finish it off, but don't make it... This is the moment. This is your, your best joke is here. This is a second best joke, so no, no joke. What, what, what I talk about. Um, so the fugue, the fugue is, I mean, how many fugues are there with five voices? It's two? It's only two, right? In, in the whole world of Clavier. So, I mean, crazy Bach, right? Five voices, ten fingers, uh, I mean, what, what, what can, you know, how, how more complicated can we, can we do this? Um, I think it's, it's very cool to keep the mood uh, the same. I mean, it's kind of like a continuation of the, um, of the uh, meditation. But now I think we do need a little bit more rigor in, in the um, la breve, you know? And I, I say this because one of my favorite parts in this is, is this part. When it starts going with the, with the six, uh, sorry, the eight notes, it's like, It's so amazing, and it, it doesn't it doesn't come from anywhere. It's just like that's Bach surprising us. But if your tempo is so floating, like you, it's like you almost wait for. This could be cool, but then at some point we need we need some some groove going. It can be a slow groove, you know. But if, I, I don't think these six, these eight note should be uh, fantasy, like, they, they are really, they are just very, very even. Uh, so, I'm, I'm okay with the beginning, kind of letting the resonance decide when you play each note. No constant tempo, no real um, beat or something. But towards here, maybe install something, and it's, it's gonna make it easier too, right? Because from here on, you just keep going. You could just keep straight. So, 
Um, I think you start from the beginning or, or just here as you want.
subject. I would not do it. I would not accentuate the arrival because, I mean, we still have to listen to it, right? We have to listen to it. better but 
but now without the diminuendo, same, same thing? Yeah. Try one more time. That's my favorite version. So, <clears throat> you know, with Bach it's, it's always a question what you want to do because there's so little information on the page and so actually you can do anything um, whether it's um, appro appropriate is one question and whether it's uh, good taste or bad taste is another question but really you can do whatever you want um, my, my point or what I try to do is because it, it felt like you had some very definite ideas but you did some things which got into the way of these ideas. So I try to kind of uh, liberate or, or point, point out those little things to, uh, to make you aware of them. And like I said, this, this is things that we, uh, we pianists, the species of pianists, don't necessarily think about, especially in bass music. We take it for granted that it's um, piano music. It's not piano music, actually it's just absolute music. I don't think this um, is even keyboard music. I mean, I don't think the instrument had any importance or meaning for Bach. Uh, it's just organic music. It could be for, um, in this case, five strings or uh, an organ or um, continuo with a flute or whatever. I mean, it, it's, it would be the same writing. So that's why we have to be careful with the piano because we cannot, we should not make it sound like piano music, I think. Uh, I mean, that's my opinion. I think there's also a, another way to play Bach, another school of playing Bach, is to make it sound like piano music. Uh, I think maybe the, um, the Russian school would make Bach something more like piano music or maybe like Buzoni or something. Um, but my tendency is to kind of take away these pianistic artifacts or elements and uh, to um, get a little closer to maybe what the essence of the music is because the essence of the music actually is, is not piano for sure because piano wasn't around but it's not even keyboard I think it's just pure music you know um, and so we have to think about these gestures about uh, where we want the phrase to go and uh, once we take a decision just be consistent and, and don't be afraid so for example this, this stuff is great um, I love it but then don't don't spoil it by giving it another round and another round and another round because there's still four, four more bars to go. In any case, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bravo.